It's time for another Football Manager Rebuild and this time we're jetting off to Italy to take over as manager of, of course, Inter Milan. With 19 Italian First Division titles, three Champions Leagues and currently sitting top of Serie A, you might wonder why we're rebuilding Milan, but I've got the aim of trying to make this team the best in the world. And we've got some great players to help us get there like Lotaro Martinez up front, Italian superstar Nicolo Barella in the midfield and recent signing Marcus Taram who can play on the left or as a striker. The club have given us £12 million to spend, has £40 million in its overall balance, but do owe over £200 million in debt. And we've also got some great facilities to help develop some of the best new talents from our academy. And we've got five seasons here at Inter Milan to try and take them right to the very top. But before we see how well our team did in the first season, I wanted to make some transfers. Firstly, we let Matteo Darmian go. The former Manchester United defender has moved on to Saudi Arabia for £2.5 million. And Cameroonian central midfielder Lucien Agum has moved to RC Lens out in France. Now our squad was already very good outside of that so I thought we didn't need too many new additions but I did bring in Tommaso Baldanzi, a 20 year old Italian attacking midfielder who is coming in from Empoli. We've actually loaned him back out for the season having signed for just under 15 million. Hopefully with his potential he can become a world class player. So with those transfers made here is what our best 11 looked like in a 4-2-3-1 system. There's some real stars in there that we haven't mentioned like young defender Bastoni. Of course we have Denzel Dumfries at right wing back and someone that I'm very excited for is Federico De Marco at left back with some great ability in that position. It looks like our wide areas might need some improvements in future seasons with Quadrado getting no younger and there being no real backups outside of those areas but that's to worry about later so let's see how our team got on in our first season. Before we do that though for the only time in this video I'm going to ask you guys to do me a massive favour for me if you could scroll down and smash that like button it really does help these videos perform better on YouTube. I'm trying to do a bit of a quicker format than normal here. So let me know if that's something you prefer. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are pushing very hard for 30,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We haven't got long. So if you are watching and aren't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could click that button and let me know who you want to see rebuilt next in the comments down below. And the final thing is if you want to continue this rebuild yourself, you can find my Patreon linked in the description over there. You can support me as a creator and in return, you'll get access access to all of the rebuild files from these videos, season one, two, three, four, and five, so you can continue it yourself. But with that being said, let's see how we did in season one. Now we were predicted second place at the start of a season and we have finished in exactly that position with 81 points way clear of anybody else around us but unfortunately we've been pipped to the title by our rivals AC Milan who got 84 points, three points more than us, snatching the league title. A quarter-final loss in the cup to Roma and a Champions League exit in the round of 16 to Barca aren't great but we have a lot that we can build from in the coming season with Toram having a great year with 15 goals and Martinez scoring scoring a brilliant 31, but he is now wanted by Liverpool and Real Madrid. And despite a negative £8 million balance, we have been given £32 million to spend this summer, so I feel like we can definitely do some business to improve this squad. Notable departures in Season 2 included Juan Cuadrado leaving at the end of his contract, and Davy Klassen has moved to Lyon, if you even knew he was at Inter Milan, because to be honest, I didn't. Inter had already arranged free transfers to join this summer that I had no part of whatsoever, so we have Carlos Augusto coming in, a Brazilian left back. One I am excited for though is David Fratesi coming in from Sassuolo with great ability in the midfield. And they've also spent £6 million on 35-year-old Marco Anatovic from Bologna, which seems like a bit of a weird deal to me. But on top of those pre-arranged deals, I managed to sign three players that I wanted in the team. Firstly, I spent £16 million on Brazilian midfielder Claudinho, who can play in that attacking midfield role and also central midfield whilst being very versatile. We sent £15 million to Torino in exchange for Italian international centre-back Alessandro Biongiorno here. And our big money signing was Francisco Trincao here, joining from Sporting Club de Portugal for around £25 million to give us a new option on that right-hand side with Quadrado leaving. And of course, Baudanzi, who we signed last summer, has finished his loan at Empoli and now can come into our team. And whilst he doesn't feature in our best 11, a lot of our new signings do. We've got a strong defence with Fratesi coming in alongside Barrera 
Barella in midfield and then Claudinho and Trincao joining fan favourites Turam and Martinez up top. This year we're predicted second yet again but we want to be the biggest side in the world so this season we really need to win that Italian league title. And we have done so by a country mile, finishing with 92 points and a 97 goal difference, way ahead of second place Fiorentina. To show you how dominant we were, we scored 140 goals and the closest team to us didn't even hit 80. We beat our city rivals in penalties to win the Italian Super Cup. And in the Champions League, we got knocked out in the quarterfinal by Monaco in the 93rd minute from this goal absolutely heartbreaking. And in the Italian Cup semi-final, Fiorentina smashed us, including an own goal in the 90th minute. And as disappointing as our cup exits were, we can't be disappointed with how good we were in the league. And whilst Taram and Martinez had 81 goals between them, we had goals from all over the pitch. Fratesi got 17, Claudinho and Kalanoglu scored 25 together, and then our new signings Trincao and Baudanzi hit over 30 goals between those two. And in terms of the club's finances, the league title has meant that we've been given 75 million by the board to spend in the coming season. And we had to spend because we lost key players like Denzel Dumfries leaving at the end of his contract to join Porto. And fellow Dutchman Stefan de Vrij has gone to Feyenoord and whilst he is quite an old player, it is a big loss. His replacement at the back comes in the form of his fellow Dutchman, Per Shores, signed for 23 million from Torino. And Dumfries was replaced by 35 million pound Monaco fullback Vonderson. We might have lost to them in the Champions League last year, but now we're getting our own back by stealing their best players. And with Jan Sommer getting no younger in goal, we have signed Rapid Vienna's Nicholas Hadel for about £13 million to be our backup goalie and compete with Sommer for those minutes. And our team is getting better with younger players like Baldanzi developing. Meanwhile, players like Bastoni, Barella and Federico De Marco are all heading into the prime of their career. And we are now odds on favourites to win the league. So hopefully in season three, we can deliver back-to-back -back Italian league titles and start to make a move on the UCL. And I did forget to mention but we did win the club world cup in the off season as well a double from bastoni and this goal from marcus taram helped us beat chelsea 3-1 and lift that trophy and that success continued with another league title win 89 points over 11 points clear of our challengers roma delivering back-to-back -back scudettos to enter milan and despite our best efforts this 100 minute goal from noah okafor meant that we did not win the italian cup i feel like the inter milan fans might hate me for losing in that final to their rivals and maybe even more so after our Champions League performance where in the round of 16 we were knocked out by Tottenham in a 4-1 loss which included a hat-trick from Hyung Min Son in a very disappointing turn of events. So whilst we did do well in the league, it felt like we needed a little bit of a change up in the squad if we were going to push for that Champions League title. So we had to get some players out the door and three players left, all to the same club. Saudi Arabian club Al Fateh sent us 25 million for Turkish midfielder Kalhanoglu. They sent us 17 million pounds for Brazilian left back Carlos Augusto. And the centre back that we signed in our second season, Alessandro Biongiorno, has left for about 15 million to the same club. Speaking of Saudi Arabia, Milinkovic Savic's contract was up at Al Halal so we bought him in as a free agent. Yes he is a former Lazio player but we'll be hoping that he can perform well for a different Italian side. We've added some extra talent to the wing with Johan Bakayoko the Belgian 23 year old signing from Dutch team PSV Eindhoven. 35 million pounds for him and 20 million pounds spent on our new left back Fabiano Parisi joining from Fiorentina. Our defence is bolstered by the signing of 25 million pounds Serbian centre-back Strahinja Pavlovic signing from RB Salzburg. And then in a £20 million move, we bought Benfica's Samuel Suarez to compete with Heidel in the net. And our best 11 is starting to look a little bit unrecognisable from the team we took over three years ago. But that looks to be a good thing because we're now odds on favourites to win the title by a pretty comfortable margin. And after this window, we've still ended with £170 million in the club's balance. And the club debt is down to £118 million, So we're starting to clear that off too. We are now one of the most reputable sides in the world with a five-star reputation, but that means nothing if we can't win some European silverware. So with two seasons left to go, let's see what we can do in season four.
And this is a bittersweet season, but I think Inter Milan fans are going to be happy overall. Firstly, the bad news. The Milan dominance continues in Serie A, but this time it's not as AC Milan have won the title with 93 points, as in second on 82. Despite them pipping us to the league, we did manage to beat them in the Super Cup, winning 4-2. And after beating Man City, Chelsea and AC Milan in the Champions League, it set us up for a final against Manchester United, where Martinez gave us a lead. Bakayoko assisted for Baldanzi to make it two. The route continued with Turam making it three in the first half. Speaking of Turam, that man popped up again at the back post to make it four, way before the halftime whistle was blue. New signing Bakayoko combined with current player Latara Martinez in the 64th to make it 5-0. And despite a goal from Hoyland, Baldanzi decided to make it six by running down the left and playing in Latara Martinez for his hat-trick in the Champions League final. So yeah, I would say it was definitely a very good season four, winning the Champions League 6-1 and we'll be rolling in cash in our final year with 100 million in the transfer budget. And with our facilities in an amazing place, we can really spend most of that money on new players. But not after a changing of the guard, with some older players leaving the club like Turam going to Saudi Arabia. We got 50 million pounds for him and he's earning 1 million pound a week, so he was never going to turn that down. Pavard has moved to Al Ittihad for 47 million pounds, which to me, for a 31 year old, seems like good money. Milinkovic Savic decided he wasn't done with Saudi Arabia though and has also joined Al Ittihad for £30 million for a 32 year old. The Saudis continue their spend by signing Pio Esposito, a young academy product who's played here and there for us over the last few years but wanted more so he's gone to Saudi. And a little bit of a failed experiment, we have let Samuel Suarez go only a year after signing him, making about £5 million from his sale. AZ Alkmaar's Sugawara has joined us to be a backup right back for £12 million. Toram has been replaced by Jeremy Doku of Man City who was on the transfer transfer list for 35 million. In my opinion, that is a bargain. We spent just under 60 million on Italian international 21-year-old Simone Pafundi joining from Udinese. Turkish international Erkan Kochu has joined us from Benfica for 35 mil. And finally, we spent 55 million on what will be the future of our goalkeeping position, Georgi Mamardashvili. And here is our final best 11 in a team that's absolutely stacked with talent. I didn't realize Mamardashvili won't be able to play this year due to registration rules, but you know, it is what it is. We all make mistakes. Some of them, though, don't cost 55 million. Baudanzi is now the star of the team with the highest star rating being one of the best players in the world at the age of 24. With 8 to 11 odds of winning the league, we are clear favourites for the title this season, and hopefully we can steal the Scudetto from our city rivals. So now it's time for our fifth and final season with Inter Milan. Do let me know in the comments what you thought of this new format. I've tried to do it a little bit quicker, and do like the video if you could. I said I wouldn't ask again. I've gone and done it. Don't worry, I'll slap myself off camera in a second. But with that said, let's see how we can do in this final season. Honestly, I cannot remember the last time we had a season like this in a rebuild. The Italian Super Cup is once again ours, beating AC Milan 1-0 in the final. We edge our city rivals to the Scudetto, not having our best year yet, but winning with 85 points, one point more than our closest challengers. So we win another Scudetto that is free in the five years we were here. And after knocking out Bayern Munich and PSG along the way, we made it into a successive Champions League final, this time up against Arsenal, a different English side, and early on, in only the 26th minute, Vonderson on the right, who we signed very early on in this rebuild, smashes it past Ramsdale, and clearly that got our momentum flowing, because in the 29th, only a few minutes later, Bakayoko put it in from close range, foul Baldanzi, and the ball ended up in the back of the net. In the 56th minute, a poor Arsenal clearance led to Bakayoko finding Fratesi for a great goal in the middle of the pitch. Arsenal though, despite being 3-0 down, were not giving up and in the 65th minute Martin Odegaard went through rounded the goalkeeper and put it in to the top left and that is when things started to go wrong or not because we actually won 3-1 Arsenal did nothing after that goal and we won two Champions League finals in a row so we finished this rebuild with countless trophies a five-star reputation the world's best possible facilities 129 million pounds in the bank balance and only 79 million pounds left in the debt am I the greatest manager in Inter Milan history I'll leave that up to you guys to debate we wore the lucky shirt today and it really worked for us let me know who you want to see rebuilt next thank you so much for watching I really appreciate all the support Let's Let's get to 30,000 subscribers. Remember to go to Patreon if you want to continue this rebuild yourself. And with that being said, we're all finished. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.